Gavin Holmes is a professional trader and CEO of Trade Guider Systems. Uh, Gavin also knows how to manipulate markets and benefit from it. Gavin, very welcome. Thank you for being with us. Hi, nice to be with you. Nice to meet you. Okay, Gavin, um, how to manipulate markets to get profits? Oh, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Let me be very clear, first of all. I personally don't manipulate the markets. <laughs> I don't have the capital size to do it. What we do do, however, is we recognize on a chart when big operators, we call them the smart money, are moving into the market. Now, market manipulation is illegal. The, the, the governments don't like it happening. But there's been a lot of reports in the last 18 months that it's been going on. It's in the Forex market, the LIBOR rates with Barclays. So people are generally accepting that there is market manipulation out there. But what we're interested in doing is teaching the retail trader how to follow the, what's going on on a chart. And how do they do it? It's quite easy, actually, when you think about and it. And how to benefit from it. Well, the individual person trading on reading a chart will see that as a market is undergoing a manipulative event, a good example would be silver in 2010, which was widely reported actually uh, at the time that a trader called Andrew Maguire had gone to the American government and said, we're, they're about to manipulate the market. Mm. Um, and it was two large banks that were being put in the frame um, since I believe they've been exonerated. But on the day that happened, which was 5th, 5th of February 2010, there was a very clear volume spike on the chart. Mm. So the market was moved down very rapidly, very quickly leaving this giant volume footprint. Anyone can go and check this. And we call that a shakeout. And what had happened there, and I'm going to talk about this today at, at the, uh, in the event, was the market there had been deliberately attacked to move the price down, to buy at lower prices, to move it back up. And that's exactly what happened. Now, how can a retail trader or someone new to this benefit? Very simple. Number one, recognize the signal when it's appeared. We call it shakeout of the market. You're literally shaking everyone out, yeah? Number two, when the market starts to turn up, which it will after that signal has appeared, you wait for the first, what we call test of the market. And if that test holds, you go long. And you've got the reason to go long. Because all that volume is activity. It's orders coming into the market. But what people don't understand is that buying happens as the market falls. Most people tell you the opposite. If the market's falling, everyone must be selling. That's where people get misled. So you, you're presenting, you've presented four uh, top trade setups. One of them is, is this sample that you've just exactly. quoted. It is indeed that exact example, yep. How could we identify when something is going to happen? Because what you've said is that you notice that something is shaking in the market. Yep. How to identify Good this? Question. this Earthquake, small earthquake, maybe. It's very good. Good. good and example. how to read it? How to to? Yep. When to enter uh, into the market when we identify something is happening? Great. Okay. Great question. Let me answer that. I love the description you used of an earthquake because that's pretty much what's going on. The market is moved down rapidly. Price goes down and down and down. Sometimes day after day, and at a point will be reached where the professional money, the smart money will see value in the market. Whatever it could be, a stock, it could be a commodity, and they decide they're gonna buy. Now, when you see this giant volume bar, we call the shakeout, you wait. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything. And the reason you can't do anything is the trend is still down. So we believe that in order for the market to change trend, we call it change behavior, the market will need to accumulate, which means go sideways. So we wait. Now, as the market goes sideways, where the earthquake happened up here, eventually price will go back up past the top of the earthquake, mm -hmm. to use your analogy. Once it's gone through that level, it's evidence to me, and, and I used to be a policeman, so I always think like a police officer, this has given me the evidence mm -hmm. that that has to be buying here at that price. And then I wait for the first down move into the top of that bar with very low volume, and that's the signal to buy. That's the signal. Because you've now got evidence that the market has changed behavior, has moved through the top of the earthquake. I'm going to use that. I love that signal. <laughs> and has then tested that level. And this is a very old principle, been around for hundreds of years. It's nothing new, but we've computerized it to find that setup for us in any of the markets. So what's, what's um, you do? And um, let's move a little bit the subject. Let's let's change into S&P. Yeah. Um, how do you think that it's it going to perform till the end of the year? I think it's bullish. I, uh, the, the, what what, what uh, many traders don't use and they should use is what's called a trend channel. 
Now, I use a weekly trend line in my trading in the S&P. And again, we'll see today in the presentation, the trend line has been going up because of what happened in 2011. In 2011, something very important happened. Very important. First, in August, the S&P downgraded the US government. And in mm. two weeks, stock prices collapsed. You may remember that. Yeah. And everyone on television was saying, oh my goodness, this is the end of the stock market. Everyone's selling stocks. And they're going to the safe haven. The safe haven was gold. It's the worst safe haven you'd ever be into. So, as I'll show you today, when you're looking at news and information, you must look at the chart as well. What we saw on the chart in that week was massive buying from professional money in August and September of 2011 in the S&P. What we then saw was them starting to sell gold despite the fact the banks were telling everyone gold's going to go higher. Yeah. And what's happened here as I record this, today gold's heading for 1200 from its uh, high of nearly 1900 and the S&P is trading up above at record levels. How can that be? Only if you can read the chart can you identify those opportunities. And, you know, I think the S&P will, will have a shakeout, which means we'll have a, a bit of bad news. It could be anything. The market falls, but then because of the trend, professionals buy on that lower trend line. And that's where I buy more, on the lower trend line. I see. Are there any companies that you identify that are performing uh, better than others? Well, ironically, the market leader for a while was Apple. And it's still looking good. But despite the news yesterday, which said Apple's share price collapsed 3.4%, whatever it was, because of the new iPhone was bending a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I see. That's a shake out. Yeah. That's a time to buy Apple. Okay, I'm looking to get long Apple again. Because that is what, what on earth? Is, they've sold how many so millions? You, you of don't you don't only look at charts, you also consider fundamentals news? I do the opposite of what the news infers. <laughs> okay, so if I see bad news about an instrument that's been falling, I look to buy it. Because I buy lower, I don't buy high. Professional traders don't. That You don't buy something that's going up because it's going to come back down. So yeah, you buy exactly. it as it comes back down. That's a fundamental rule. But the problem retail traders have is they're using MACD, stochastic, moving mm -hmm. average which is telling them to buy. And sometimes they get a profit and then bang, like what happened with Apple. So we buy when we see a VSA principle on those dips. So you wait, you're patient and you wait for the evidence. Correct. Hmm. That the price has the, the right signal Correct. that tells you to buy it. Correct, very simple. Okay. And I have the surname Holmes, like Sherlock Holmes. So I, I always, <laughs> I think of the detective on exactly. me. Exactly. I think, do you give me the evidence. In fact, I know that sounds odd, but I actually asked the market to tell me what it's doing. I don't make an assumption. Mm -hmm. I, I let the market in the chart tell me what it's doing, why it's about to do it, and then I react accordingly. So S&P is bullish at the moment. Mm -hmm. What about European stocks? Well, again, you've got a mixed, you've got a mixed message there. What we teach is um, a method where you look at the parent index, let's say the FTSE, the 250. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that's been going up. There's no one can argue with that fact. It's been bullish. However, it's also had dips. Now, the golden rule for buying a stock is, first of all, you want to buy a stock that is acting stronger than the index. Mm -hmm. And we have a way of comparing that. So you, you draw the chart of the index. And if there's a stock that, as the index falls one day, the stock doesn't fall, that's the one you buy. Oh, yes. you just wait, because it means professional money are supporting that stock. Now, in a bear market, it's the complete opposite. If we were in a bear market and prices were coming down, you would short stocks that were acting weaker than the index. So if the index tried to go up and a stock continued to go down, then you short it. Very simple. You're using the index. But if you look at a weekly chart and a monthly chart of the FTSE, the S&P, the Dow Jones, all of the major indices, they're bullish. And I'll show them Despite the of the political landscape in Europe, uh, we've seen recently, well, all the tensions in Ukraine are still there. Uh, UK has has been through the the Scotland uh, yeah. voting about su succession and well not to mention Catalonia and Spain yep. which are in the same process nowadays. Mm -hmm. What? How do you think that our stocks continue to be in in this uh, trend despite of the political issues? Because the political issues, believe it or not, have no direct correlation with the individual stocks. I'll give an example. Apple stock price is not geared to what happens in Russia, I can assure you. Yeah, that's right? true. Professional hedge fund managers who trade Apple, I trade Apple, what happens in Russia, we can't control it. What happens with the market, however, is sentiment. 
Mm. The market's driven by emotion and fear and greed and sentiment. That's how it's always worked for hundreds of years. Since the tulip market's going back to hundreds of years, sentiment. There's two types of sentiment. There's bullish sentiment and there's bearish sentiment. Or you get neutrality. Now, I remember a time when the S&P was only moving in two or three point ranges. You know, and everyone was saying, well, what's going on? Nothing's happening. Suddenly, you've got wonderful volatility. The VIX, the, the index of fear, mm -hmm. is, is back again. That's great for a trader. So when you see all this news, always look at what the effect it has on the chart. Remember, we were told that gold was going to hit record highs. It did go higher. But the minute or the week the bank said this is going to make an historic high, it's fallen to yeah. massive lows, 30-year lows. So what we've got to watch out for, I think, and I do, is I don't get too influenced by what is on the news. Because I can't change it, I can't affect it, and it's just sentiment. And it creates a lot of noise in the market. So I remove the noise by just looking at the chart. Mm. Um, a, a good example I can give you, which will help you understand. In 2010, the BP oil spill took place in the Gulf of Mexico. Do you remember this? And I was presenting at MIT in Boston, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And I'd just done a scan of my stocks and I'd got a big buy indicator for BP. This was the week that they said we cannot cap the well. Same week, buy indicator. And I'm, that yeah, can't be right. That can't be right. I, and I, I looked at it, I can't be right. I then see on television, there's Colonel Gaddafi on the news saying we're going to buy BP. Libya's going to, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And I look at my chart, and the next day, after this fall, the price went up. On this massive volume, the next day, the price moved higher. Someone's buying here. Mm. Now, I had to question it myself, but do you know what happened? The price nearly doubled in six months, and I'll show that chart today. And everyone looks at it and says, I remember that. I was selling. I said, I know. The professionals are buying from you. Yeah, and BP see. was trading up at $56 only a few weeks ago. That was your evidence. We've got it. You'll see the chart. Again, Everything I'm telling you here in this interview in 2014 is on the chart. It was on the chart on the day that it appeared. But the problem is with human emotion and sentiment, you'll miss that trading opportunity because mm. you'll be so in tune to the news and the negativity and the fear. And you'll ring a broker and say, I'm, well, I think I'm buying BP. Buy, don't be saying. <laughs> That's what they'll do. And it'll, it'll literally, you'll miss a very good trade. And this happens in all markets as well. Um, there's a great setup at the moment in natural gas, which is a now again, the news about gas with what happened in Russia, you'd think the gas prices would be going through the moon. No, yeah. it's been good shorts. So it's very opposite. Again, I would say successful traders are contrarian. They don't follow the, the masses, the crowd. They just trust their instinct, read the chart, take action. And that's how, that's okay. how I trade. I think that we're, we're going to, to stay focused then on <laughs> charts, yeah. reading our charts, being patient. Yeah. and looking for evidences yeah. that are going to tell us when to enter the markets. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much, Gavin, for being with us. Pleasure. Nice Thanks. to meet you. Take care. Cheers.